Do you know the verse in Act 4 that leads into the final act? Of course not. Legends shall speak of sacrifice at world's end. The wind sails over the water's surface quietly. But sure. Dude, just record your own voice and jack off to it already. About sacrifices and endings. All right, we good? We good? Sweet 120 FPS? Buddy, please. I admire the persistence, but please just die. They're Midgar's anti-genesis copy measure. Anti-genesis copy, copy measures. Mostly been eliminated by them. Sure, man. Impressive. Whatever. Flower wagon for Aerith. The most important mission of the entire game. In fact, they should have made this entire game the flower wagon building game with Aerith. Wood, huh? Could we find some just lying around? Kid, there's a bunch of wood right behind you. Let's get the walking sim over with. There is a point to all this. Shiny stuff, shiny stuff, shiny stuff. Is your uncle still missing, little girl? Is up in wall market. Is your uncle Don Corneo? Oh God, is he Don Corneo or one of the Don's lackeys? We're not playing your game. We're not playing your game. We're playing my game. Screw your materia, man. I need some wood. I need some really sturdy wood. Dude's got the same Napoleon Dynamite hair. Wood, perfect for the wagon. That wood that looks like every other piece of wood? Wait, didn't this belong to that one guy that said, don't touch my wood? Yeah. You feel fate's hand. I would be willing to share some of my wood with you. You know what, second thought, I don't want your wood. Oh, tying this into Tifa's bar now? I want you to come up with a name for the place, but I can't come up with anything stylish. Hooters! Oh, I get it. I get it. He used the word nine in his description. In reference to Final Fantasy IX. HQ for an anti Shinra group. The fuck? Yes. A perfect bar for the slums indeed. But they want to make sure you really, really get it that it's this seventh heaven, not a another seventh heaven, not to be confused with seventh heaven in Sector 8 or Sector 5, but seventh heaven, Tifa's bar, specifically that bar. The little bastard's a carjacker, too. Maybe it's just me doing so many side missions, but the bosses are pretty tame by comparison, and that's probably by design. It's not meant to be a super challenging game as far as like gameplay progression. Most of it is supposed to revolve around the cutscenes and Zack. Damn, this game really wants you to relish in this particular section, doesn't it? Yes, whatever would we have done if you hadn't found the instructions to build a wagon? Is this worse? Is this worse, or is Angeal's dialogue worse? Or is Genesis' dialogue worse? I can't decide right now. Just comes off as a long fetch quest. With some convenient NPCs giving you stuff. Do I want to enable this dude to keep stalking me? Oh, squats. Am I supposed to time it somehow? Oh. 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 Where's the buff naked dude that I'm supposed to be challenging as the final boss? When I was a rookie, my mentor always told me, embrace your dreams. Oh my god, they actually did it. That's what it takes to be soldier. Thousands and thousands of squats. Let's go. Let's just get this over with. Thoughts on the gift of the goddess. Oh my god. The gift of the goddess, the source of life, is said to bring immortality. The most widely accepted theory equates the gift of the goddess to the Benora White. Dude, if Crisis Core had just focused on tying the stuff back, just very specifically in a focused way, in a simple way, just tying all the events of Zack back to FF7 canon, it would be amazing. Unfortunately, it tried to expand it into some other dumb shit. Dude, enough with the dreams and the honor stuff. It's not deep. It's not meaningful. It's just pretentious and melodramatic as hell. Very heartwarming, like a final date before going off to war. I mean, in concept, in execution, it's a bit yeah, it's looking funky. really cute. Yeah, keep the war story, and Zach going to war. Just remove all the Angeal stuff and the Genesis stuff. It just drags everything down so so much. My God, so much of this game's plotline was devoted just to the Angeal Genesis bullshit. 
and so much of that just circles the toilet over and over again. But no, the stuff with Aerith and Cloud is great. That's the thing, maybe they should have just focused on the war story, with Cloud and Sephiroth being the focus of the war story. Right? And then you can expand upon all the G-type stuff without Hollander or Lazard or Angelogenesis. Just make it between Zack, Sephiroth, and Hojo. And that can resolve all of the the soldier, the G-type degeneration stuff in a much more elegant and neat way. And then when you sidetrack back to Aerith, then it becomes less of a detraction of the war story and more of a supplement. She becomes like the genuine girlfriend that he never had as a result of being um, having been so ambitious to go to war and become a hero that he forgot to in a sense, grow up and have a real life. And she can be the completion of that. And then Cloud can be the war buddy that he wished that he had in Sephiroth. Whereas Sephiroth is a superior, Cloud can be more of the um, the Kohai, as they call in Japanese. The the successor. The So Zack is the mentor. Zack's passing on the knowledge that he got from Sephiroth over to Cloud. Yeah, that would have been so much better. So much better. I love seeing this version of Cloud being this almost little puppy, eager to please his superiors, eager to climb the ladder. Like the moment they got rid of Lazard, Hollander, and Geel and Genesis, the story became way better. Way better. It's like at this point, the game decided to really indulge in the tiebacks to FF7 canon. She remembers specifically Zack too. I'm kind of curious how their interaction is going to work out in Rebirth. <laughs> It's funny how by Cloud blocking out his memories and pretending to be first soldier, uh, a soldier first class, that it inadvertently caused Aerith and Tifa to both block it out as well. Aerith because when she sees Cloud, she's really seeing Zack. And Tifa because she doesn't want to lose Cloud again by revealing the truth. Oh, it's the mansion. Oh, shit. Feels like I'm playing near replicant now. Where's Emil? Oh, monster's just chilling. Yeah, it's the same dudes inside the Shinra Mansion in the original game. Uh, alongside Lost Number, hidden inside the safe. Oh, to open the laughing safe, you need to figure out the numeric password. Search the mansion for a door that won't open. And look through the keyhole for clues. There are three enemies. There are six apples and one chair. Hey. Oh, kids worshipping at the altar of the Mako. Hey, where's the other one? Oh, damn it! Janky-ass mechanics! You had to just kill him really, really fast. I'm a victim of the crappy targeting system. Where the hell am I going? Guys, please! Can't do anything here, but they allowed me to come all the way out here. It's pretty crazy. Wow, this has so far felt like the first mission that's given you so much autonomy. You're free to go anywhere you want. And there appear to be some side missions that stretch up pretty deep, like that cactuar. Where the hell did it go? I heard that the hero Sephiroth was coming, so I've been waiting here all day with my camera. Oh my god, this must feel so terrible being Cloud. Having the person that he worships and idolizes right here, and everyone in town coming to see Sephiroth, not him, not Cloud, not the guy that actually came from this town, because he he told everyone from this town that he was going to go off to be a great war hero like Sephiroth. Never happened. So he has to come home with his tail between his legs and hear everyone praise the great war hero Sephiroth instead of him. I'll never forget your words. Remembering what you said that day gives me the courage to stay strong. So thanks, Zack. That's great. You know, Zack is the exact same character he is with Angeal in Genesis as he is with Cloud. But since I don't really give a shit about Angeal and Genesis, in fact, I kind of loathe them now, but I really care about everything that happens with Cloud and Aerith, Zack becoming like the reflection of the characters around him works perfectly for someone like Cloud. Painting of Tifa when she was a girl? It's a sad painting. I wonder if Sephiroth and Zack are going to have like an interaction too in Rebirth. What is that? Because Sephiroth is very down to earth. He's much more direct and straightforward and less pretentious. He's just like a guy doing his job. 
whereas Sephiroth, uh, whereas Angeal is just going on and on about soldiers and dreams and honor, and Genesis just going on and on about a stupid loveless poem. Sephiroth's just a guy, an operative doing his job, and then only to discover that you know, Shinra fucked him over, and it causes this existential crisis in him. That's much more believable, not super drawn out in that fake, pretentious way. No such luck. You are a monster. Oh, God. You just had to bring this bastard back. This allegory of uh, soldiers being genetically enhanced to become super soldiers and hardened My criminals. Is continuing hardened killers. Degrade. You Get will rot. Shit out of here, man. Get your stupid apple out of my friggin' face. Swear to God, this guy actually makes the story Wings worse. Of light and dark Significantly afar. worse. Yeah, meeting Zack again. <laughs> Tifa's gonna have quite a PTSD episode herself. Activating combat mode. You guys, please. I'm escorting a wounded soldier here. I love this part of Zack's character so much. Once he faces the same existential crisis, once he has this crisis of conscience and purpose, Hey, Very similar to what a lot of Zach, soldiers go through. We still haven't solved the mystery of the cactuar. I offered to fix it for her, but she refused. She's waiting for you to come back and fix it, so hurry up and get back here already. Now, can I actually leave this place? Can I leave Nibelheim? Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, this one mission is so densely layered with characters and stuff. Lots of information. Well, it's no good just waiting for my blonde knight in shiny armor to show up, so I've started learning how to fight myself. My teacher tells me I've got a knack for it. Oh, it just hurts even worse, doesn't it? For her. Like, it just seems the story has picked up so much. The pacing has increased so much. Ever since we got rid of all the Angeal and Genesis stuff. I almost forgot. Please don't tell anyone in Soldier that I asked about the blonde guy, okay? Wow. Yeah. The two of them kiting each other's feelings about inadequacy and disillusionment. <laughs> Get out of here, please. Oh, yeah. Co coffin key? Oh, God. Seriously. Coffin key? It's a one-time use only thing? What the hell? It's one-time use only. Crap, I gotta fight another one of those things. There's no going back beyond this point. Make sure you have no unfinished missions left, such as uncompleted missions. Oh, shoot. The cactuar and what else? The girl in the painting? It's not structured in the same way that you'd kind of expect an RPG to be structured. Like, here's a bunch of battles leading up to a final boss battle for that chapter. It hasn't been like that. Every single chapter has not been marked by a boss battle. It's really just marked by... Um, by story chapters, really. There's combat, sure, and there's... Uh, eventually, like, quote-unquote, bosses? But they're really more like story obstacles than they are actual, legitimate, like challenging bosses. Like some of the mini bosses and common enemies are even harder than they are. Watching is Sephiroth descend into madness is quite a terrifying thing. Professor Gast. Like whereas Angeal and Genesis were pretentious shitheads from the very start, Sephiroth was not like that. He seemed quite, quite rational with a level head on his shoulders. And then watching him descend into this state of existential crisis is quite. It's quite terrifying. You notice he ain't reading poetry. He's reading actual scientific documents. Oh, this is a terrible, terrible day for Zack and Cloud both. Yeah, so I guess all those side missions, the girl in the painting, the cactuar, all the stuff inside the Nibelheim mansion, the bomb, the super bomb that we have to defeat before it can blow up, all that's now foreclosed to us. It's like Zack's reaction to Cloud and Tifa and Sephiroth is what really makes his character, I think. It's his reaction to all the characters. And so if the other characters are weak or pretentious or bullshit, then that reflects on Zack. But if they're amazing, then it also reflects on Zack. Oh God. Jesus. Unblockable. Guard, okay. Gee, it's a good thing that Sephiroth doesn't have access to potions and ethers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my god, these things have so much HP. This guy... This has so much defense. 
so much defense and he's super fast. Did they just give this guy tons of HP on hard mode? Every attack, like, staggers you and takes you out of... Fuck this! Shit! Shit! Dude! Please! I need some equipment that just absorbs all this elemental bullshit. I can't get a single hit in without this dude just canceling everything out. Yeah, so far, Sephiroth has been like the only boss that's felt like a true boss. The others have been like just stronger versions of ordinary enemy. See, Genesis just went down the path of self-destruction, but uh, at least Sephiroth's ambitions make a lot more sense. If you're driven to the edge, the game is over. Oh god. Shoot! Dude, stop that! Okay, I need to equip some gear that'll just prevent me from... Prevent me from getting knocked out like that, because it's super annoying. Just gotta cheese this fight. You just gotta endure long enough so that his attacks don't keep drawing you, knocking you back. I mean, this is what makes Sephiroth truly totally terrifying. It's just how hard he is to deal with and how he just fucks you up. All it took was one good stab right to the abdomen. Damn, this is so cool. This is the shit that makes it cool. This is the shit that makes it meaningful. I guess before this entire incident, Cloud had already been infused with a sufficient amount of Mako that's given him the ability to actually survive such an attack. Dude, this one mission right here already makes up for so much of the bullshit that came before it. This is awesome, man. I love seeing this being remade like this. Imagine if they made this war story like this is the culmination of all of their efforts. You know, discovering the truth about the G-type soldiers and... Zack ultimately losing all of his war buddies with the exception of Cloud being like the last person. The last person that he can trust and also imbue his knowledge upon. After all, his mentors died. He lost his mentor, he lost his hero. He lost his purpose in the war. He lost what gave his life and ambitions meaning. And then he sees the exact same thing in Cloud. Then hoping to pass it on to him, only for all this shit to happen. Damn. And deal. It sort of makes up for this dude. Sort of. Only sort of. If they just focused on the war, the war with Wu Tai, and then ultimately it affects the morale of the soldiers and turning into this fight within Shinra itself, then culminating into the incident at Nibelheim, that's amazing. That would have been amazing. Like, and Cloud is the last person that he can really trust. His last war buddy. I mean, their friendship develops so naturally. Just friends who undertook the same mission. It's been a while since I've played this game, so I can't remember all the little details. Like, who exactly was the last boss? Was Sephiroth the last boss? And this is all just cutscene from this point on. This is an official notification of the change in status of the fallen personnel. Sephiroth killed in action. Zack Fair killed in action. Two infantrymen. Oh, damn. They're erasing us. That's so good. Like, Shinra being our superiors now at the culmination of this war, just erasing our identities. I'm enjoying this part so much. So much. Man. I wish all of Crisis Core was like this. Like, get to the relationships that really, really matter. The way this whole section has escalated is just amazing. Shinra covering up their dirty secrets. Oh shit. Oh god. Hey, get back here. Let's instant death, you bastards. Oh my god, it keeps going. Okay. Hey, get back here, you shithead. Our superiors using us as guinea pigs to breed us into super soldiers. I love the part about Zack that is all the war story stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's Aerith daytime. adds a nice we're still a little weak. icing to the cake Should for it, but this is like what's really, really good. Because that's who he is. He's a soldier. He's a soldier with a girl at home, but he's a soldier. Wow, it's been only one mission, but it feels like half the game already. Like, a lot of Crisis Core 
really does depend on you having context of what happened in FF7 original. But I would say that this section, or the section with Modeoheim, some parts of Aerith, and then with Sephiroth, and then leading up to this entire mission at Nibelheim, I think works by itself. It doesn't necessarily require you to have context of FF7 original in order to be genuinely fascinating and enjoyable. Whereas the stuff with Angeal and Genesis, it really only hits home or has more, more significance once you understand the events of FF7 original. This is so much better now that we have... Spend more time with you. We have context of Zack's struggle in this mission. And it gives I him a to reason go to, to go back to Midgar. Return home to the girlfriend he left behind. You want to come with me? Please stop living. Come Please stop living out. and just die. Come At this now. point, he's abandoned Shinra, abandoned soldier, everything. All he's got left is his war buddy and his girlfriend. Damn, it's so depressing, but it's so good. I love this. I love this so much. Why couldn't all of Crisis Core be like this? It feels like this is 45% of the entire game, and it's the best we'll part. Look. Hell yeah. Shit. This is so cool, these little mini games. Oh wow, this sway. It's tough. Gotcha. Jesus, these ones are more resilient. Back here. Shoot! Using the war backdrop as a way of Please. testing everyone's alliances, everyone's loyalties, everyone's purpose. I like how Next even time. Cisne's character is I'll being really tested. <laughs> Where's her allegiance? Is it with the Turks? Is it Shinra? Is it to us? This conflict between duty and personal feelings is a very eternal theme in a lot of Japanese storytelling. Yes, it's got kind of like the goofy anime charm, but I think this section is where the game truly shines because it it highlights on something quite eternal in us as human beings, as opposed to the more teenage melodrama stuff. This seems like the more mature part of the story. Like Shinra fighting Genesis, Genesis copies and stuff, that's all so convoluted. This is just very straightforward, very direct, very easy to understand, and very well done. Yeah, this shithead. She guides us to bliss, her gift everlasting. Just get rid of this guy. Get rid of him. He makes FF7 look bad. You this shithead, just get rid of him. 100% just retroactively erase this dude a from FF7's version. history. All the lore bullshit that's important to the G-type soldiers, do that with Sephiroth and Hojo. It's just a bunch of nonsense and bullshit. You ate my hair, so now I'm not gonna die anymore. You what the fuck? Twisted. You twisted, nonsensical the son of a bitch. Every time this legend. bitch opens his mouth, Shusky every time... You came here to eat my hair. Right, that makes perfect sense. You came all this way just to eat my hair. There's nothing about this that doesn't make any sense. What's the point of this? Sephiroth was already the last enemy. This guy is just sandbagging. Please just die. Just die, dude. Prove your honor to me. Please just die. There's a case to be made about Angeal being in this game, but no. No case of Genesis being in this game. Like, he serves no function but to slow everything down. Yeah, Zack being this soldier of fortune or soldier of misfortune fits him way better. Like, all the little banter Hi. with Zack and no all problem. the characters, it just matters so much more. Ask you to join the family. Now that this pivotal turning what point has what did you say? come Sister. in his life. Activating combat mode. I don't have time for you guys. Really, I don't. Conflict oh, yeah. resolved. And Cloud's still somewhere all the way back there waiting to be dragged through all this. Holy god, what the hell's with the tankiness on these dudes? You're telling me Hollander's transformed into a... You angel too? are a former member of Soldier. Genesis is still holding an apple. Why? Please, man. The gift of the goddess. It's getting old, dude. Do you know the verse in Act 4 that leads into the final act? Of course not. Legends shall speak of sacrifice. 
at world's end. The wind sails over the water's surface, quietly. But sure. Dude, just record your own voice and jack off to Enough it already. Sacrifices and endings. You see, How tragic. Sephiroth, his existential crisis is truly goddess. tragic. This guy is just laughable. Surface. Sephiroth means to kill Clouds and destroy. And but this guy is just, I'm just here to listen to myself talk. On and on and on. I hate him. I literally hate this guy. I want his existence erased from FF7 lore completely. Like, none of this even needs to be here. You can just go straight to... the two of them arriving in Midgar. The game's last boss should have been Sephiroth. But they're throwing a bunch of these, like... These sandbagging enemies? He's slapping me with a fucking purse. But here's the weird thing, they're trying to make him out to be more threatening than Sephiroth. Tons of HP for no stupid reason at all. Funny worm. Funny worm. Sure. That makes perfect sense. Why am I here? You'll feel my pain. It's like it's designed just to draw the shit out. I can't believe this guy is actually a boss. I really can't believe it. You are a colossal waste of time, buddy. Just die. Disappear. Forever. This is terrible. Every time it detracts it's back to Genesis, time, nothing exactly. good comes from it. It's so amazing, but it, like, it sucks at the same time. Everything with Genesis is trash. It is garbage. Delete this guy. Delete him from FF7 memory. Everything that guy touches funnels into a cone of ignorance and stupidity. All the stuff with Cloud, with Aerith, with Tifa, with Sephiroth was great. Making this a war story that focused on Zack being this optimistic soldier and ultimately being betrayed by his superiors and being hunted and being this soldier, soldier of misfortune on the run is amazing. But the moment you bring back the Angeal and Genesis stuff, it becomes so obfuscated. They try to force all these artificial plot points and all these explanations. And then it turns out that the Zard is a Genesis copy or an Angeal copy. And Geo has an actual function in this story, which is as a mentor to Zack. So that's somewhat redeeming. Genesis has no redeeming qualities at all. Like his only purpose is to drag down the entire thing. Basically, the whole existential Genesis thing where he wants to take revenge, that was completely superseded by Sephiroth. And Sephiroth's existential crisis and desire for revenge makes so much more sense. Like, it's so straightforward and clear. And Zack's relationship with all the soldiers and Cloud is clear. But every time they bring Genesis into it, it's like they have to constantly twist all these explanations and spin all this context to force it to make sense. Focus it on. Hojo, Sephiroth, and Zack. Sending them into war, and then ultimately their superiors using them as like guinea pigs, turning them into these super soldiers, um, and then being disillusioned by that fact, leading into Zack's relationship with Cloud as a war buddy, the only war buddy he can trust, and the only war buddy that he walks away with and Aerith being this girl that he formed a relationship with, like the only good thing in his life that he, he has to leave behind and ultimately never even see again. That's amazing. That's super amazing. But then all the stupid ass G-type soldier lore stuff that's dumped onto us with Angeal and Genesis is terrible. That last session, the whole Nibelheim incident, just inside that one mission, it was so good that I think it redeemed, or almost redeemed, all the terrible stuff that came before it. It's like, it's weird. Like, that felt like the ultimate culmination of this entire story. And Sephiroth being the culmination of all these villains. But then again, for some stupid reason, the game had to throw all these extra 
artificial bosses after Sephiroth. And that's what this is coming off as. It is, it's not coming off as a, like a gameplay escalation, like gameplay difficulty escalation. Those bosses after Sephiroth, they were like artificially just made more tanky because they had to be, is all. But if you're talking narrative story-wise, I think Sephiroth, maybe Genesis, if you had to go down that path, is the final villain of this game. And that's why I, I, I remembered like half my brain just buried this game in the past while the other half relished the parts of it that truly fleshed out the events of FF7 canon. Half of this game almost went down the same path as Dirge of Cerberus. But the stuff that redeemed it prevented it from falling down the cliff altogether. <laughs>